Where'd he just come from, Nicholas? Nicky, where? Where else? Drop by. Thought you might like a ride home. What's the word? Still unconscious. I could say it might be days before they know for sure. You'd better get some sleep. I've arranged for the hospital to let me know if there's any change. Come on. I've also arranged that no information be uh, given to anyone else about Foxy's condition. Provo's going to leak it to the press that he's dead. Why? I don't want to scare them, whoever they are. They think he's alive, that he's talked. They'll go to ground. That could waste a whole lot of time. Is that all you care about? Don't waste time? Just, just get the job done, no matter who gets hurt? I never said that. Look, all I want is the guy that shot him. That's all I care it's about. It's part of the same package, Nicholas. If whoever did it thinks he's safe, he's more likely to take chances. Now, come on, breakfast and a little sleep. This guy's been fixed anyhow. And so we consider it safe to proceed. Chicago's getting impatient, you know that. Yeah, you said that before. it has been a ship up there nearly two months now. Well, it's uh, not always possible for Morel Line ships to sail for a particular place at uh, exactly the right time. I think it possible. You know what happened to Mrs. Morel? Yeah, well, that was different. She was uh, just too inquisitive. Things can happen to other people for other reasons, like Carmen. Poor Carmen. Rest in peace. Paolo, my friend, another martini. See, si, signore. Well, they're beginning to hold us up. Closed up the Gulf ports. Philadelphia, Savannah, too. We can forget those for now. Okay. So you want a shipment to Chicago? As you Italians say, pronto. Uh, presto. However you say it. How soon? With the ship sailing in the next two days, she'll be calling at Chicago. You got the merchandise ready? Packed and ready for shipment. Good. Paolo, my friend, it's been nice to see you again. Give our regards to uh, everybody. Signore? Signora? No mistakes, Paolo. No delays. Then we don't need any unpleasant little accidents. Should be okay. Well, it's a good boy. I think he'll make it, don't you? You want to know what I think? I think maybe this was a mistake. Guy's been fixed. You said that yourself. I got a hunch. Call it feminine intuition. I think he could still make trouble. <laughs> Who 
Who's your friend, Nicky? Is he a policeman? <sighs> well, no, not exactly. Sort of, in a way. Well, why does he want to look around here? Admiral Fox wasn't shot here. Yeah, but he was here beforehand. Granger thinks that he might have seen something or heard something that ties up. Here? Yeah. Like what? I, I wouldn't know. Look, I'll tell you all about it later, but in the meantime, just trust me, okay? Well, look, I want to. Now, you know I want to help all I can for Foxy. But, Nikki, there's something funny going on, and I want to know what it is. Are all of these Miss Fabian's masterpieces? Well, most of them, yes. The collages are all hers. What? Collages, like that. Everybody to his taste. They're very highly thought of, you know. She exhibits all over the world. Here, Europe, the United States. Was she here last night? Yes. Who else? Mrs. Raphael. Miss Ace is doing a portrait of her. That's what the party was really all about. Daddy and Paolo and I. Did you talk to Admiral Fox? Of course. What about? My canapes. I thought they might be giving him trouble, but they weren't. Something was. Well, I don't know. I, I guess all of this. Well, that wouldn't surprise me. He didn't tell you what it was? No. I think he was going to, but, well, just then Daddy came, and a few minutes later, Foxy went to telephone, and shortly afterward, he left. Oh, Paolo. Paolo, this is Mr. Granger. I think he'd like to talk with you. Signore. I understand you were here last night. Was he, Signore? Yeah. Uh, you know Admiral Fox. Were you talking to him? Uh, only for a moment. Uh, he wanted to use the telephone. Oh. You've seen him several times. Uh, did he appear quite normal to you? I, I don't understand. Oh, I just mean, was he in a hurry? Uh, was he excited, worried about something? Well, there was uh, champagne last night, Signore. How would I know? All right, thanks. Uh, um, I understand Mr. Morell has gone out. Would you happen to know where he is? He went out on business, Signore. Uh, private business. Okay. Private business. Echo. Oh, no, it's too much. Too much for what? Well, I mean, it's an awful lot. <laughs> Out of what? Money? Money's nothing. Money can't bring him back. You know that, and I know that. I, too, lost someone I loved. You're very kind. He worked for me. One of my family. Why shouldn't I take care of you and your little boy? You knew David, Mr. Morel? It's a big family. A thousand people work for me. I'll not forget this. I'll tell everybody how good you've been to me. Oh, don't tell nobody. What other people care? It's a secret between you and me. You understand. You promise? All right. Good. And when your little boy gets ready for college, you have him come to me. I fix it, okay? <laughs> I'll leave it there. Thank you. Inspector, it's been 24 hours and no action. Why aren't you holding Morel? You know better than that. No evidence, Nicky. No fingerprints. And that ballistic report doesn't help until we find the gun. And no one was seen. But whatever happened, it started in Morel's house. Foxy was on to something. How do I prove that? Well, hold him. Break him down. Morel's a big man, Nicky. I've got to go carefully. Look, can't you use the evidence Granger had against him? What evidence? What evidence? <clears throat> Well, boy, why, the series of coincidences involving Morel Schiff, the dead nun in Cleveland, the, the taxi driver named Miller. You were pretty strong about it, Every evidence evidence. You and Foxy put me down on that point. You say you're going to stand there now and deny that he's involved Just in Just that the game is bigger than Morel or Foxy. Well, not for me. Look, I want the guy that shot Foxy and I and want him now. Have... I told you. It's part of a package, but the package is very big and we've got to get all of well, them. Well, then let's just start small. Say, with one killer, he'll lead us to the rest or of them. Or alert them before we're ready. Oh. This is one of the biggest narcotic routes into the States. If we break it up now, it'll save a whole lot of misery. In the meantime, we just sit back and do nothing about Morel. Nicky, be reasonable. Morel is not a man you can haul in here and sweat until he talks, not without evidence, and I'm not convinced we'll find anything against him. What are you talking about? Whatever we've got right now points right to him. His house, his ships, his taxi company. Yeah. I don't think the man is all that careless. And I don't think he's stupid, so I've got some doubts. Yeah, you might be right. So we have to be patient. Until we get a lead, I'm going visiting. I may pick something up. You want me to come along with you? No, not this time, Nicholas. Personal?
just the widow of one of my victims. How about you? No, I'm not hungry. But you have eaten. Yes, sir. Joel and I went to the delicatessen. We shared a pastrami. What's the matter? Nothing. You feel awkward, my being here? Then what's the matter? Why do you have to ask so many questions? Isn't that what any two people do when they sit and talk? What's happened? Between us? Such friends, such old friends? Since the other night. Absolutely nothing. Buried a husband. I took his son out for pastrami. Dave's gone, Elaine. There's no bringing him back. No. Look, you've got to trust me. I don't know. What? I said I don't know. I don't know who I trust, what I trust anymore. Did you call the garage? Yes. And they don't know anybody called Granger. Why did you do that? Why did you come here and lie to me? Well, I didn't want to hurt you. And you think you haven't? Coming here like this, making me talk about Dave? Who are you? What are you trying to do to me? Look, why did you phone the garage? Because I began to wonder about you. And I was right, wasn't I? What made you wonder? Was there somebody else to see you about Dave? Did somebody come here and talk to you? I really think it's none of your business. Did they give you money? Look, you get out of here. You have no right to come here and ask me questions. Elaine, you've got to tell me. I've got to know who came here. No, you lied, and I don't know you, and I'm not telling you anything. Mommy. There. Mommy. Joel, go to sleep. It's all right. Please go, and don't you ever come back, ever. Not yet. Look, this is too important. It can be dangerous for you, dangerous for the boy. What do you care about that? What do you care about us? Dave got held up and shot, and suddenly there are dangers, mysteries, and people warning me about other people. All right, I'm going to tell you the truth. Oh. I didn't want to, but there's not much time, and I've got to make you understand. Leave me alone. Dave wasn't held up. The police said so. Did they tell you he had a gun, that he was going to use it? That's how he got himself killed. I think you knew something like this might happen. You're lying again. He wouldn't have a gun. Things were wrong, bad, yes, but he wouldn't ever use a gun. Elaine, he'd become a hood. He'd become a killer. How can you say that? You didn't know him. You lied about being his friend. You did not know him. I met him. Once. What are you trying to say? Somebody sent him to kill me. And that's how he died. behind it. I can't. But I've got to know who's here today, who you talk to. I'm sorry, my dear. I got something on my mind. Then talk about it. You know better than that. Well, I know how to make you forget your problems. <laughs> you do? Later. Your turn. Hazel, please, uh, move over. You're in my shop. And so you're very sorry tonight. But I feel so good, I am not going to let you be. Hazel, that's what I like about you. you. You always feel so good. But today's special. I have some wonderful news this week. I've been saving to tell you when we're alone, private. 
We are on. Oh, listen. Just before I left New York, I got a phone call from Rio. They want a one-woman show of my work in South America. Isn't that wonderful? That's one. Oh, darling, I'm so excited. My reputation has reached South America. Oh, what am I going to do? I could dance in the streets, darling, after all these years, wanting people to want me. Now we must plan. All right. We'll plan. OK. Naturally, it's short notice, like all these things. They want to exhibit in two weeks' time. And I have to ask you a little favor. I don't have enough collages to make a whole show, so maybe I could borrow some from your collection. Not many, maybe ten. Well, you already have uh, the collages for the Chicago show. Yeah, but right after, we can send them to Rio. Isn't Chicago good enough? Of course it is. But Rio's also very important. You understand that. Until now, you arranged everything for me. Until Rio, that I got on my own. So, don't be jealous. You know how I feel about my independence, how important it is to me. Important to be independent of me, eh? To have people recognize my talent, darling. You don't want me to have any fame or success unless you made it for me. And who else made it? Where would you be without me? Who bought your paintings from the beginning? Who arranged your shows? Who would have heard of you in South America if it weren't for me? If my paintings didn't have any talent, you wouldn't have bought them. I know you too well for that. If they didn't have any talent, the galleries wouldn't take them. <laughs> I bought the galleries, too. Your paintings, the galleries, your clothes, everything. I bought them all. Do you really believe that? Are you that stupid? Do you really think you bought me as well? I got a box full of receipts for you, Asa. And I have nothing but contempt for you, Asa. The door was open. I, I was looking for Mr. Morell. Has he bought you too? He hasn't even made an offer. Perhaps he won't. You don't look as if you were for sale. You play snooker? Long ago. I'll take off your coat and find yourself a cue. My name is Granger. I heard about you, Mr. Granger. I'm inquiring into the death of Admiral Fox, among other things. My daughter told me. Well, I want your help. <laughs> if I could help you, you wouldn't have to come to me. I'd come to you. He was my very good friend. If I knew who did this to him, I would... I would kill him with my own hands. We found the key to a drug smuggling operation here in this house. That's why Foxy was killed. Say that again. Foxy was killed because of something he saw in this house. In this house? Yes. I don't believe you. You're not aware of any traffic in drugs? No. Are you under any kind of pressure? What kind of pressure? A blackmail, uh, threats of violence to you or yours. No. Do you have any family, just your daughter? My wife was killed four years ago. She was knocked down by a truck. At the docks? She was visiting one of my ships. Did the truck stop? And they never found the driver. You satisfied that that was an accident? The police were satisfied. Were you? Oh, Mr. Granger, let's talk about something else. I suppose you knew that uh, she was a heroin addict at the time of her death. How did you know that? I read the autopsy report. Did you know she was an addict? Don't be a fool. Of course I knew it. You can't have someone you love going to pieces in front of your eyes and, and not know about it. I watched her for two years. I did everything I could. How did you get hooked? If I know that. If I know who did it to her. I was going to ask you if you were involved in narcotic smuggling. I don't think I need to now. No. Somebody is, in your organization. What are you saying? Your ships are being used as a pipeline, and your boys, some of them, are being used as fingermen, hoods, killers. 
Dave Miller, you know that name? Now, what about him? I shot him. He just wasn't quick enough, didn't have his heart in his jaw. You got proof? Not enough for a court of law. That's why I want you to start thinking. Go on. Someone in your organization with knowledge of your shipping movements, access to your subsidiary companies, like, uh, like the cab company. Someone they trust, somebody you trust, maybe. Oh, eight, ten, but they're all executives. Uh, all right. Another line. Somebody you took on about six years ago. A little before that, maybe. Six years? Yeah, your wife has been dead for about four. You tell me she was hooked on heroin uh, about two before that. Seems to me to be some kind of connection. Excuse me, Mr. Granger. I got a little business to deal with. Uh, make yourself at home. Carol, I want him. Who is he? Finish your little game. I'm going to finish mine. Carol! <laughs> I'm at the Morell house. Get Prover to send some in over here right away. We may be too late, but I want a tail on Morell. Stay there. Did you see your father go out? Well, no, but he could have gone out through the garage. Can you get me a list of his executive associates? Well, yes, of course. Nikki, Miss Morell is going to give you some numbers. Let's get some uh, men there to each of them. Look, if Morell comes, hold him for his own good. Stay on the line. It's a long shot, but it, it might work. Now, where would he go if he were upset, angry, maybe trying to figure something out? Well, he hasn't done it for a long time, but right after Mama died, he used to go down to the office and work all night to take his mind off it. Okay, talk to Nicholas. Hello, Nicky. Yeah, do you have a pencil? Signore. Working late, eh, Paolo? Uh, just the household that counts, Signore. Mm. You know, I'm lucky, Paolo, to have such loyalty from my staff and from my friends. Uh, you're my friend, too, Paolo. You see, Signore. <laughs> How long have you been with me? Well, just over six years, Signore. Mm. Six years, eh? As long as that since you've come here to work for me. Well, you've been very good to me. Why did you come to me, Paolo? Because I have ships that sail from Canada to the United States? I came to work for you, Signore. I, I came to serve you. A lot has happened since then. Four years ago, my wife died, remember? Of course. It was very sad. It was the end of my life, too. Nothing has mattered since then. Nothing matters now. Because I want to know why was she killed, Paolo? Well, why ask me, Signor? Maybe she knew too much. Maybe she wanted to escape. Escape? From a problem. Maybe she wanted to tell me about it. You know, she was a drug addict. I, I, I don't believe it. Two years before she died, someone started her on heroin. Six years ago. Just after you came. I had nothing to do with this, Signore. <laughs> You're a liar. Tonight I began to remember things, how she looked at you. Not because she wanted you. But she wanted what you had to give her. No, that's not how true. How patient and nervous she was every time you left town for a few days on business. And how bright-eyed no, no, and gay she was when you came back. Oh, small little things that add no, up. No, 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 no. I kill you! I swear I kill you! Prova to call off his men. They won't be needed. 
Tell him to come up to Morell's office instead with the homicide squad. No, 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 come in. It's not too late. I'm still used to New York hours. Uh, what would you like to drink? Practically anything. With ice? With ice, please. Nice of you to drop by, even at this hour. Well, I was in the mood for a little live company. I suppose you want to ask a lot of questions. A few. About Admiral Fox? About Mr. Morell. What makes you think that I'm prepared to talk to you about Enzo? I caught the tail end of your conversation. I got the impression you were a little steamed up. A little. I find that when women are steamed up, they talk a little more freely. <laughs> Nicky has some smart friends. Are you a policeman? Yes and no. Oh, you look like rather a um, nice family man to me. Don't let that fool you. Mm -hmm, how refreshing. Don't go away. I want to make a deal with you. What sort of a deal? Some things I'd like to know. Well, it's my business to ask questions. I never answer them. Never think of anything else but business? Sometimes. Oh, that's good. Let's forget the whole thing and think of something more amusing, eh? All right, I think. I need a little more ice. First question. What were you and Morel talking about? My art. You thought he created it, bought it, bought me. He was wrong. My turn. Uh, is Enzo in trouble? Uh, well, I wouldn't know. That would depend on his past. That sounds a little ominous. You knew him pretty well. Who were his closest business associates? I was never interested in his business, darling. Only in him. Are you quite comfortable? Yes. Why did you have to get into something as attractive as that? Always change for parlor games. Gives the man the advantage. Are you quite comfortable? Why? Thought you might like to take your jacket off. This I don't usually take off until I go to bed. I'll be glad to. I'm sure you know that. It's about Mr. Granger. Well, what about Mr. Granger? Is he a policeman? Look, won't you sit down, Mrs. Miller? He has an official capacity. Well, why do you ask? He came to my home. Go on. Was my husband a criminal? Did Granger tell you that? Was he? Yes, Mrs. Miller, we think he was. Did he try to kill Mr. Granger? There was a gun in his cab with his fingerprints on it. It had been fired, and there were powder marks on his hand. I'm sorry. So am I. Is there anything else? There's no need. I'll go alone. Sleep. I, 
I had such a bad dream about Daddy. He kept saying, understand. Understand what, Nicky? Well, look, Maria, it was just a dream. I don't know. Permesso. Yes? Some papers for the lawyers. I, uh, I, I must make a list. Of course. Go ahead. I thought you might like some coffee. Thank you, Nicky. Thank you, Valerie. once more. Oh, how do you feel? You look fine. <laughs> I'm all right, I guess. Drink your coffee. Now, sit back, relax. You must be tired. Hmm? Yes, I am. Oh, poor sweetie. Poor Marie. Oh. Mm. Thank you. Now, you must promise me something. As soon as you feel up to it, you come to New York and visit me for a while, hmm? Oh, Asa, that's good of you. I don't give invitations lightly. You know that, Marie. I mean it. There's plenty of room. Yes. We take in some plays. Musicals. Oh, only loud, gay, terribly vulgar musicals, OK? Yes. Oh, Nikki. But don't you worry. I won't introduce her to anyone better looking than you. Well, that still leaves you a lot of room. Right. I always feel a little edgy before I fly. In a few minutes, and we, she's off, bag, baggage. Marie, now, I probably shouldn't ask this, but I will. Promise me, say no if you think no. About what? Well, darling, I know. Now, after what's happened, you won't be living in this big house anymore. You'll be living in some place smaller in time. Yes. And you'll be selling most of this furniture. Yes. Well, I know this is going to sound terribly vain, but there are some things I like to buy. Buy back, I should say. Some paintings I did for your father last year, which he adored, and I'm very fond of. Well, I said it. I am vain. Oh, no. Of course you can have them. I said bye, Marie. Oh, Asa, now you know Daddy wouldn't have wanted it that way. They're yours. To take right now, if you like. Well, the crates are still handy. Darling, you are too good. Now, which paintings, Asa? Paolo can get them ready. Oh, well, a few of the collages. Uh, permesso, Miss Morel. Uh, most of those paintings were to be loaned out this week. Arrangements made by your father. Loaned out where? Uh, to an American gallery, senor. Yeah, where? Which gallery? It's run by a man named uh, Swanson in Chicago. Daddy used to loan things to him quite often, for a few weeks at a time. See, that's why there's such a mess out there with all those crates. Asa, show Paolo which ones you want, and then after the show you can have them, OK? Darling, how kind. Hello? Yes. Mr. Granger? Granger. Good, thanks. You'll have to excuse us. Come along, Nicholas. Uh, Granger, wait. Uh, I'll be right back. It's Foxy. He's conscious and trying to talk. Come on. Wonderful things. Colossus. Excuse me. Let's telephone. Visit us. Foxy? Mostly about the collages. Well, does he know who shot him? I don't know. He's still heavily sedated. Couldn't tell for sure. Charlie. 
time for my exercise. Don't be late for supper. Oh, wouldn't miss it. <laughs> Ham and cabbage. Nick King. I've heard of you, King. Did you pick up anything new? It's today, tonight. Shipment to the States, to Chicago. On one of Morel's ships? Yes. Bless you, Charlie. You've got sweet ears. Well, isn't that what I get paid for? What hmm? ship? Aggression, do you know it? Yeah. What time's it due to pull out? About six, pier D. Thanks, Charlie. Thank you. inside out for nothing. Oh, that's all right. You had your job. But you're quite sure there's no more cargo coming on board. There's nothing on the manifest, Mr. Granger. There's another dead end. The hey, Granger, where are you going? At the car. Well, come on, we can come to the warehouse. Unless you want the exercise. What is it, Granger? That painting again? What do you mean? Don't you like it? It was one of my biggest successes. Darling, just in time to wish me luck. Sending my painting to Chicago. I'm having an exhibit there, you know. Uh, why here? Why not in the custom shed? Oh, this is kind of informal. We know this plot pretty well. It's always going in and out. I'll bet. What ship? The Gresham uh, Morell lines. This stuff is not on her cargo manifest. It's been shipped care of the captain. Certain goods are sometimes shipped that way. Look, uh, this is my business. As Admiral Fox said, remarkable collages. It's very interesting. Do you have a knife, buddy? I don't even know who you are. Give him a knife. If you say so, Inspector. about this, Senior Morel asked me to dispatch these paintings. We will talk about this at headquarters. Carry a permit for this? Of course. Well, we'll see that later. All right, Inspector. Will you be good enough to take care of this? Nikki and I will get them out to the car. Right. Come on. We'll get these paintings out of the crate, will you? I advise you to stop talking. You are making a great mistake. I know nothing about this. Look, you have no proof at all. When I see my lawyers, there will be serious trouble. Clear conscience. Completely. And why did you try to kill Admiral Fox? 
Are you mad? Why do you say that? Foxy told me. I just left him at the hospital. But, but he was dead. Alive again and talking. And that gives you a choice. You can either go up for attempted homicide or turn Queen's evidence and tell us what you know about the narcotics. No, Paolo. Darling, it's just a trick. I'll get it. in your sleep. to tell you I'm sorry about everything. Thanks. Don't play with the other stuff. That's not the only reason. No, it isn't. There's something else you want from me. To help, if I can, with anything. There's nothing. Do you have to hate me? I guess so. Hot hate. He had a gun, you had a gun. You didn't do it to hurt me. Then let me help. Because it would make you feel better. Do you always do that, go to the widow? Oh, I, I've thought of it, but I've never done it before. And why this time? Something between us? I think so. Since I first met you. I know I have no right. You have a right. Any man, any woman. Then let me be your friend. It could grow, Elaine. I couldn't. Not for a while. When I can, 
It won't be you. I expect you to be bitter. Bitter? No. David earned his death. And somehow I earned it with him. I know that. I've got to learn to be free again inside my son. Maybe in a couple of months. I think not. It's not this lady you want. You don't know her yet any more than I do. It's the other lady, the one who could forgive you. But you don't need that. Goodbye. Take care of yourself. Thanks, I will. And the boy. His name is Joel. His father's name is David. Thank you.